Bez, I'm coming here live to you today because as promised, when I came online a couple days ago, I mentioned I wanted to talk and touch base with you guys on some of the main themes that you were working through and uh, the things that you wanted support with. So this is me doing that. So hey, if you don't, if you haven't met me already online here, I'm Tamina and I am holding this container of healing for you all. And um, the intention of this group is to really come into the body and to understand our emotions and, and learn what they have to, to tell and to share us. Because what I've noticed is that we live in a world where we ignore ourselves, we ignore our feelings, and we wonder why things are happening in our lives, but we don't take that moment to really look inside of ourselves to see what is happening internally. So this is a space for us to explore that, to explore ourselves, and to explore being with each other in the space of getting to know ourselves intimately and learning how to be with our emotions, to, to discover their gifts, and to really, really be with our vulnerable sides because there's magic in being vulnerable. There's magic in being ourselves. And there's suffering when we stifle ourselves or where we wrong ourselves or where we, you know, where we begin to, to lead lives where we are holding ourselves back in effort to gain acceptance. It's time to rewire that. It's time to give ourselves permission, all parts of ourselves, or all sides of our emotions to come out so that that can be the, the pathway to our freedom, the pathway to our abundance, the pathway to the success, or whatever it is that we're striving for. We can do that by going inwards. So. That's why we're here today, and that's why you guys are here in this group. So um, I see you guys are tuning in. Hello, Carrie. Hey, Reagan. Hey, Sierra. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, I really wanted to get dedica dedicate today's video to talking on some of the things that you guys have commented on or said you wanted to support with. So one of the things that was mentioned was you know, the, the experience of feeling and, and caring too much. Yeah, does, any, does anyone find that is an experience they have in their lives? Um, if you relate to this, feel free to um, chime in on the comments. This is very much an interactive um, chat and experience because um, this is not just me chiming in and talking to you guys. This is us um, talking about this together. And I'm hoping that Facebook cooperates here so I can see your comments. If they don't show up right away, I will be coming back in the comments and typing my responses to that. Um, okay, so let's start here about the experience of feeling and caring too much. Um, this is really interesting because I, I had a conversation about this yesterday. Um, hey, Sierra, okay, the comments are working, I hear and see. Um, I had a conversation um, about this yesterday over dinner. Um, these were men, so the perspective is a little bit different, but I think it's something valuable because we all have uh, masculine and feminine energies within us. So essentially, what came out in this conversation was that these individuals were essentially protecting themselves from disappointment. Um, they were shielding themselves from, from um, expressing their excitement, whether it be for a new job opportunity or something exciting coming into their lives. They would suppress that feeling of excitement to protect themselves from potential depression um, if they don't get this opportunity. So what they essentially would do was um, kind of mute that feeling of excitement. Um, but the result of that was, you know, we, we unpacked this together, was that they weren't really able to celebrate or applaud their own milestones. So in, in other words, there wasn't a feeling of enjoying the journey, enjoying their personal journey, because there was this need to protect ourselves from the feeling of potentially not getting this opportunity. So by masking the emotion of feeling, you know, feeling that excitement, we also didn't get to feel the happiness and the fulfillment and the joy of where we are right now. 
and I see this all the time. Um, I'm a dancer professionally, so my line of work is, you know, we always have to audition for our jobs. We're always put in um, the line of fire because we're standing in front of people and they're going to say yes to you. We want you. No, we don't want you. Right. Which which can be a very confronting experience. You could feel very insecure when you're on that like chopping block. You know, we want you. We don't want you. It's easy to take that as like a, oh, I'm bad. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, you know, I didn't do well. Um, I won't succeed. It can go down that route. So what people in, in, in essence do is, okay, I'm going to show up at that audition. I'm going to pretend that I don't care. I'm going to pretend like this doesn't mean anything to me. So that way, in case I don't get this, I don't have to feel bad about myself. That is usually the narrative that happens. Um, and, and this feeling, this experience also transcends out from this particular container because this can happen in, in, in you know, your relationship. You know, I'm not going to show that I care too much about this person because if I do, I'm going to look desperate. I'm going to look like I need them. I'm going to look like um, pathetic or weak. So I'm not going to show myself. I'm just going to play it cool. I'm going to play it consistent, right? Can you guys see that connection point, how that happens there? It can happen in your relationship. It can happen in your job, your friendships, anywhere. So, all right, we show up to these places. We act like we don't care. You know, we're consistent. We're cool. Okay. What does that look like to the people who we're with? They don't feel us. They don't feel that desire within us, that fire, that spark, that like, yes, you know, I want this. I want you. I'm excited about this opportunity. I want to be here. This is my heart. You know, I'm speaking this out and through. You know, I'm here. I'm living my purpose. You know, that, 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 that environment, they're not feeling that drive. They're not feeling that spark, that thing, because that's attractive, you know? That's attractive to feel your heart, you know. Imagine showing up feeling nothing, like, all right. Imagine I showed up to this video like, hey, guys, I could be here or I could not be here. Doesn't matter. That is flat. And that, that um, aloofness, right? Usually it's not because, it's not because, you know, I actually don't care. It's because I t totally care and I'm afraid of showing that I care because I'm protecting myself. So, wow, this is going, uh, this is getting really large here. So I want to kind of bring it back to that, the, the feeling that we're talking about here about showing our excitement and showing that you care. It is a gift. It's a gift to those who receive it, your excitement, and it's a gift to you because it shows that you can enjoy your process, that you can celebrate yourself, that you can, you can feel fulfilled in your moment, in yourself, in your experience. But the missing part that we usually miss when it comes to learning about the emotion of excitement is that how you can maintain your power is by not attaching yourself to the outcome of the opportunity. So let me put this in other words here. You are excited, but your excitement isn't attached to whether or not you get that job. It's not attached to whether or not that person likes you. It's not attached to whether or not the outcome is what you are excited about. It's not about the outcome. It's about your experience. Because once you release yourself from that outcome, it doesn't matter whether or not it happens. Because you are excited about the process. You are excited about being here. You are excited about your inner milestone. You're not excited about whether or not you get the job. It's not about the job. It's about your experience. It's about where you are right now. 
And that's how you can really transform your, your, your relationship with excitement and feeling and caring too much. You're not caring for the, you're not, you're not showcasing your care for how that person receives it. It's not about that person. It's about the gift of being able to care, of being moved by the world, being impacted by the world, of feeling your feminine energy. So feminine energy is, is all to do with everything inside of you. And men and women have feminine energy. We all do. And it's about receiving the world around you, being impacted, being um, moved by everything that's happening around you, and learning how to move with those emotions and those experiences so that they can be gifts to yourself and others. And our feminine energy is 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 quite often misunderstood. So in that misunderstanding, we stifle it. We say, okay, I'm not going to feel too much because I don't understand it. I'm going to protect myself from those feelings. I'm going to push them aside. So that's why we're here, is to learn and understand ourselves on this level and our emotions and what they have to say so that we don't have to stifle them, so we can be with them and learn from them. So I want to answer a question here from Reagan. What do you think about this? <clears throat> a person sent me a video, how to control your emotions, and it was useful tips about harnessing that. To me, it seems like a very masculine perspective, and I get the importance and usefulness of that, but how do you show someone the value of feeling our emotions, the feminine perspective? I think that there is a fear which is warranted, that if we get caught up in emotions, we won't be able to have structure and won't accomplish things and be successful. I can understand that because often the people who are feely feely all the time can't do much or always have problems and get taken by the waves of emotion. And I want this person who sent this perspective to understand that both ways are important. How do I convey that? Beautiful. Oh, thank you for sharing this. This is a very juicy share. Ooh, yes, I totally relate to this feeling. Um, I totally relate to this feeling. I hear and I see it all the time. I even see it, saw it in my conversation I had yesterday um, about wanting to, because we think that, oh yeah, to control our emotions, we have to conquer them. We got to control them. You know, you feel this thing and you got to like will yourself out of it, you know, get above it, rise above that emotion. Um, but that is bypassing, you know, we're not understand. we're not learning the way through the emotion. To really learn the emotion, we got to experience it. We got to feel it. We have to make space for the emotion. And sometimes, um, you know, there's a lot of layers to this. Sometimes when we make space for that emotion, we think that it won't end. We think that we're going to be feeling it all the time. We think that it's going to overcome us. But really, when we give that emotion the time and space to listen to it, we can't always tell it when it's going to be over. That's something that we don't know. We don't know when we're going to, you know, be finished feeling or, or, or really learn the lesson that our emotion is telling us. But what we can do is we can set containers for it. We can set the structure for it. So for me, when it comes to working through my emotions, I set out structures in the morning. I, I dedicate my morning practice to feeling my emotions all the way. You know, sometimes it's seven minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's an hour. But I dedicate that entire time to feeling what's alive inside of me. So it's balancing my masculine and feminine energy because my masculine energy is saying, here's the structure, here's the container of time that I'm dedicating to feeling my feminine energy for this entire time. I'm not going to tell it where to go. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm not going to try to control it or, you know, stifle it or, or hold myself in stillness. I'm actually going to let all of that go 
and let my inner feelings and strings and movings move me. So that's how I give time and space to harness my feminine energies because I have that container of that hour, but within that hour, I'm fully feeling. Um, so that allows me to be um, fully feeling, but also I'm also able to, you know, work through my day and I'm also able to, you know, show up in the world and do my masculine oriented um tasks um, so that I can accomplish things throughout my day, but I'm also not stifling myself, my inner feelings. I'm giving them a platform because they are valuable. Because during that hour of practice, I'm healing myself. Um, I'm working through past traumas. I'm pleasuring. I'm experiencing pleasure. I'm experiencing fulfillment. I'm feeling my creative energy. I'm also getting channeled messages from the divine. You know, you know those messages where it's like, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know this is gold. I know this is where I'm meant to be next. I know this is my heart speaking, you know, or those feelings where it's like, ah, my intuition's kicking in. It's telling me I'm not need, I don't need to be here. I need to be here. So it's like I'm getting that oracle kind of feeling of like, ah, it's coming through me. And now I know where to direct my energy with my masculine energy throughout the rest of the day. And um, it's also like a energetic shower. I'm clearing my chakras, you know, from yesterday's baggage, from yesteryear's baggage. So that time's really important. Um, so I think I, I think I touched on what you were saying, Regan. And if there's any more, um, please feel free to to to, to chime in here. Um, yeah, because you can have your feminine energy. You need your feminine energy to be successful and accomplish things. You need both. You can't just plow through life. You know, you'll just be a rock. You won't feel anything. You won't, you know, you, you, you'll get to that top of the mountain, but did you really experience any joy in that process? Then you'll be like, okay, where's my next mountain? And you keep trying to climb, keep trying to climb. But it's like emptiness inside. So that's why it's important that we tend to our feminine energy. Um, hey, Lisa. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Michael. <laughs> yes, okay, so thanks. It's almost like our emotions are a compass of which way to direct our masculine energy. Ah, yes, it can work like that. It definitely can. It definitely can. Um, and it also is like telling us what we need in the process. It's like a checkpoint of like, okay, I'm doing this thing, I'm doing these things, but how am I feeling? How are these things impacting me internally? It's actually kind of telling you how your body's doing, how your soul's doing, how your spirit's doing, how your mind's doing, how everything inside of you is doing as you're walking forward, as you're showing up in these places. Because that's how sometimes, you know, we can find ourselves on this journey and we are like going through all of these things and we get to that point and we're like, wait, damn, I don't feel good. I don't feel fulfilled. I feel empty. I feel unhappy. Because usually it means that we've been ignoring ourselves internally as we go through that process. So that's why it's like a partnership. You know, the male or you know, the male energy and the feminine energy, they work together inside of us. They work together so that we can show up in the world, but then also inside of ourselves we're showing up fulfilled and we're showing up whole. And we're taking care of ourselves internally as we show up externally. Um, so that's why when we hear that narrative about I feel and care too much, you know, maybe we're judging that. It's because we're judging our feminine energy. We're saying that, you know, that part of ourselves can't be there. When really it's about learning to, to nourish and, and, to, and to accept and, and integrate our feelings and our carings because that's our feminine energy. That's that's our that's our insides. That's the parts of our our emotions and our feelings that are um, also important to understand and to bring with us as we show up in the world and as we accomplish all the things that we're doing. It's about integrating that part, our feelings and our carings. <laughs> ah, so.
this is that's us that's us unpacking all of that together um, I really enjoyed this and if anyone has anything else they want to ask or, or contribute to this conversation feel free to leave it in the comments um, I love having these conversations I think it's important that we talk about um, these topics that sometimes get stifled or sometimes forgotten and um, it's really about it's really about understanding ourselves on this intimate level because not only does it help us it helps our relationships it helps the community the collective the world around us so that we can all be whole so that we can all really start to appreciate the value that we bring individually I feel buzzy even sharing this like my fingers my hands are buzzing um, because it's really a gift to be embodied it's really a gift to understand your feelings not just from a mental perspective but from a perspective of like you know feeling them in your body like uh, how do you how do you you can't imagine joy joy is not something that you imagine something that you feel something that you experience pleasure it's not something that you could think about oh yeah I think I'm feeling pleasure now nah, you're actually like feeling it in your body same with pain you know you can't think that you're feeling pain you're actually feeling that pain in your body so that's why it's so important that we connect with our bodies and that's why I'm always talking about dance that's why I'm always talking about emotions and that's why we're talking about bringing it home to the body all right I got speaking of body I gotta eat <laughs> I'm feeling that hunger in my stomach um, so let's continue this conversation I love you guys so great con connecting with you all um, I want to also say for anyone who's in the LA area I'm gonna be offering morning practices starting in 2020 um, we're gonna be meeting in the park and practicing um, exercises that'll bring you back into your body um, and and start to practice the things that we're talking about here that morning practice that I always chime in about we're gonna be doing that there um, for those of you who aren't based in LA I'm gonna be offering an online program starting June Wow not June January or February it's gonna be launching so that you can start to practice your embodiment and get connected to your body in this way um, and I also have a free practice sheet for you guys to do these feminine practices every morning it's called for your feminine magic I'm gonna put a comment there so that you guys can start these practices today you can start cultivating your feminine energy and learning to to experience your feelings and emotions because um, it's so important all right all right divas um, I'll see you soon Mwah. much love all right, bye.